Question. Can you build muscle like a bodybuilder using only calisthenics? Answer. Yes, you can, actually. When you think of bodybuilding, you tend to think of cable machines, dumbbells, and barbells. You tend to think of exercises designed to isolate specific muscle groups. Bodybuilders, likewise, tend to use fairly heavy weight in order to get to that point faster. Bodybuilders don't lift as much as powerlifters or strongmen, but they still need a certain amount of stimulus. This simply isn't possible with body weight, right? That's why you can't build a bodybuilder-like physique from your bedroom. You need the gym. Only, do you? First up, bodybuilding is what you want it to be. Some people take issue with the term functional training because they think it's nebulous. All training is functional, they argue. Therefore, no training is functional. Thereby, the whole concept is a scam. Well, what about bodybuilding? All training builds your body, right? And yet nobody calls bodybuilding not a thing. Anyway, my point is that bodybuilding can be whatever you want it to be. You don't have to aspire to be Ronnie Coleman. It's true you won't get to that point with bodyweight training. But to my eye, Frank Zane has a far more pleasing physique. Likewise, I generally prefer the look of natural bodybuilders, and this is a bit more achievable. And you'd be surprised just how much size and definition you can pack on with bodyweight training alone. Now you might think that training with your body weight fails to provide enough resistance or isolation to truly build muscle. This is not the case. Firstly, it's very simple to increase the difficulty of a body weight exercise. This is accomplished by moving to a more complex progression that will either remove one limb from the equation or place you at more of a mechanical disadvantage, usually by lengthening the lever arm. This basically means moving your point of contact with the ground further from your center of gravity. Sometimes you will elevate part of your body to increase the effect of gravity. So for example, you can make a push-up more difficult, increasing the resistance by performing them one-handed by placing your legs on a raised platform, or by moving your arms out in front of you, or by moving your arms further down your body. How about performing handstand push-ups? In some cases, this can be used to build more muscle. The issue, however, is the lack of isolation. You guys know that on this channel, I'm interested in building the mind as well as building the body. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Skillshare. So essentially, this is crowdsourced learning. Members of the community can create their own classes and then viewers such as ourselves can watch them at our leisure. I was actually a member of Skillshare long before I started working with them. I used Skillshare to learn programming skills, to improve my video editing, my presentation skills. Really, it's been a big part in allowing me to do this as a career. And of course, this being the start of the new year, it's the perfect time to be thinking about career. Skillshare not only provides you with all the skills you might need for a career change, but it also has a lot of career focus classes. A great example is build a creative career, full-time or freelance, which is curated by Skillshare themselves. Lately, I've been watching Adobe Illustrator CC Essentials Training by Daniel Scott, and that's something that I'm really interested in getting better at. I highly recommend Skillshare, and the first 1,000 people to sign up down below using the link in the description will also get one month free so they can try it out at no risk to them. Thanks so much once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and now on with the show. So the problem with using the one-handed push-up example to build your pecs, for instance, is that this is a technical movement that also requires a lot of muscles working together. You don't fail to do one-arm push-ups because one pec has reached the point of fatigue, usually. Rather, you fail to do one-arm push-ups because the collective strength of several muscle groups, including a lot of core muscles, is no longer great enough. Likewise, you're more likely to reach failure performing handstand push-ups because you can no longer balance yourself not because your shoulders have reached failure. And this lack of isolation also reduces the fine control you otherwise have over which muscles you want to sculpt and hone. Luckily, there are a few things we can do about this. First, we select calisthenics exercises that do more or less focus on a single muscle, or at least a few together. So for example, the pull-up is a compound pulling exercise, but it's pretty darn good at focusing on the lats. Likewise, the chin-up is pretty great for targeting the biceps. Remember, you don't need to totally isolate the muscle. It's fine if a few supporting muscles chip in. Most bodybuilding movements aren't completely isolated, unless it's a single joint movement like a bicep curl, say. And even then, there are caveats. Other great examples include tricep dips for the triceps and one-armed tricep dips if you need something harder. The same goes for one-armed chin-ups. 
Dips are fantastic for the chest, although they also work the triceps and shoulders a lot. Planche training is surprisingly good for building big biceps. And you can tweak a lot of more common exercises in order to change the area of focus. So for example, Hindu squats vs air squats move the pressure from the glutes and hamstrings and more so to the quads. Sissy squats take this to the next level and can build some pretty impressive legs. Diamond push-ups hit the triceps more so than regular push-ups. Decline push-ups will target the upper chest more. Pike push-ups really target the shoulders. One of the key factors though when it comes to building muscle with calisthenics is to maintain the time under tension and the continuous time under tension. This is what will allow for a metabolic buildup, which is one of the most useful triggers for hypertrophy. Basically what we're talking about here is not resting with your arms fully locked out or fully extended. You've seen me do lots of fast push-ups with an almost partial range of motion. This accomplishes that, and this is one way in which you can get that growth from very high reps, rather than just very high weight. We've all seen prisoner workouts that consist of hundreds of air squats and push-ups. It's how Tyson built insane legs with squats. Very high rep training does build muscle. Just select movements that are closed to chain or otherwise very safe to perform in high doses. You can also accomplish this in almost the opposite way, with a really good controlled range of motion. This once again keeps the muscle under tension, while at the same time building stronger tendons and greater control. There are more techniques you can use as well. I like to use mechanical drop sets, or the variation I call gauntlet sets. That means I'll take the most challenging version of the movement and then switch to the easier version with minimal rest. Generally, I keep rest times short when focusing on either bodybuilding or strength endurance, which tend to go hand in hand. Another option is to use pre-exhaust sets. If the chest isn't what's giving up first during your dips, then get it there faster by doing a few push-ups first. Getting a very good stretch on the muscle is also very effective for muscle building, and it also strengthens tendons and is useful in lots of other ways. And my guess is that the hypertrophy benefits here come from causing more muscle damage. Or you can provide yourself with more support, or even use cheat reps. By making the exercise easier, you allow yourself to do more repetitions, focusing on the specific muscle group. Now for those of you who are about to comment, there's no way he built his physique with just bodyweight training, which is a comment I get on a lot of my videos, you're probably new here. I very much do mix up different training modalities and I'm a huge advocate for that. It's kind of my thing. All I'm saying is that you can build a lot of muscle and definition using just body weight. You'd be surprised at just how much of my muscle comes directly from body weight training. About 80% of my pecs, probably. Because that's how that works, right? In fact, predominantly calisthenics athletes like Simon Arter, Daniel Vadnall from Fitness FAQs, Austin Dunham, and Gabo Satano have incredible physiques. Those guys got there by being absolutely world class in their field. And their physiques are byproducts of that performance rather than being actively sculpted as a bodybuilder might. But you can get there faster and without necessarily being able to do some of the things they can do by focusing more on hypertrophy as your main objective using the strategies I just shared. This might mean you achieve those high level skills a little slower than if you prioritize skill training especially if you're adding more weight on. But it's all a matter of knowing your own goals and adjusting your programs to match. And as always, I kind of want both. It's also about training in a very mindful manner so that you really feel the right muscles doing the work if that's your goal, or so that you maximize your recovery and focus on practicing skills if that's your goal. And of course, for the best results, I highly recommend mixing your calisthenics with other modalities. Body weight plus weightlifting is fantastic for bodybuilding, skill development, strength, functional performance, and pretty much anything else. Just make sure to put the complex skill-based movements at the start of the workout, along with any heavy compound lifts, and you'll be golden. So what do you guys think? Can you build a bodybuilder-like physique using just bodyweight training? Do you guys use bodyweight training or do you prefer weights? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're looking for a training program that combines bodyweight training with weights and also a whole bunch of other modalities, whether you're talking about kettlebells, mobility training, all kinds of other stuff, then you might enjoy my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training 2.0. That comes with over two hours of instructional video, as well as an 80 plus page ebook. And there's a big discount on right now for the January sales. I'll put a link to that in the description down below. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.